Hello, you've reached Gloria with Farmstead Talk, and I am here today with Melissa Gonzalez, and she is representing her state of Nevada in this homesteading interview today. Welcome, Melissa, and thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So, uh, Melissa, would you like to share with the audience where they can find you on social media? Um, I am on Instagram. It is Farmstead Gonzalez Las Vegas. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much the only one we have right now. Okay. So if you would go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, where you're currently living. Sure. Um, my husband and I, um, we live here in Henderson, Nevada. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's about 20 minutes outside of Las Vegas. It can be considered a suburb of Las Vegas. We're about five minutes from Boulder City, Hoover Dam. Um, I was born and raised in Connecticut. My husband was born and raised here in Las Vegas, but he did spend um, pretty much every summer in the Dominican Republic on his uncle's farm there. So that's where his love of farming came in. Um, in Connecticut, I was raised, backed up to the woods. I always had a love of animals. Um, so yeah, so that's where our love came from of farming and animals but um together we have several grown children and we're raising a five-year-old here in henderson okay and what do you folks do outside of the homestead do you work outside of the homestead um i'm actually retired from the las vegas metropolitan police department my husband is still currently an officer there um he will be retiring in the next well, we don't know yet, but he will re be retiring soon. Uh, so that's, I mean, what we do here in our home is just for the love, love of it. But yeah, we, we do have other, other jobs. Okay. So what was your inspiration for wanting to live this lifestyle? And what does a modern homesteader look like to you? Well, I, you know, I've watched several of your interviews and, you know, just on Instagram and Facebook, just seeing what other people do as far as, um, you know, just having a different way of living, um, especially here in the Las Vegas area, uh, living on a farm per se, or living with chickens or farm animals isn't too common. Um, but we, we really want to incorporate that into our into our everyday life. Um, we did raise our older children in um, more of a uh, typical Las Vegas neighborhood where the houses are on top of each other, small backyards. So when this opportunity came to purchase this home on an acre here uh, and raise our little one differently, we, we took that opportunity. Um, we, we started with chickens and we kind of just grew from there. Uh, we, actually, this is the first year we have a pretty good size uh, garden and uh, we adopted two baby goats this past winter. And from there, it's just been, it's been growing. Um, for me, for us, we've kind of combined um, the idea of farmsteading with my passion for yoga and um and it's really it's kind of cool because farmsteading and yoga have some very um are very similar in some ways um as far as um yoga is all about harmony with the mind body and the environment and and i find that to be very true with farming as well so from there, we've kind of pieced it together, and that's where we've kind of come up with the idea of, um, well, I didn't come up with the idea, but of course, goat yoga and what it can do to, to help people in the community. So would you say your inspiration would be more about just wanting to pursue a healthier lifestyle? Yes. I, I mean, I think that's what it comes down to, not just for us, but to show other people in the community that just because we live in the desert, it doesn't mean we can't find health in our own backyard. And, um, you know, it's just, yeah, I, exactly what you said, just finding that, um, 
that just peace of mind knowing that you can go into your garden and, and pick your fruits and vegetables and put them on the dinner table or, you know, eggs out of the um, nest boxes and, and not only us, but share them with our, our neighbors and our friends. Yeah. So um, do you know what growing zone you are in there? Yes, it is 9A. Okay. And what is something that um, that you grow out there in Nevada is something that's typical for that area? Um, you know, I don't believe that there's anything typical, you know, besides maybe cactus of the Southwest. Um, we, we did plant, we have about 20 tomato plants. I'm just looking over there to the garden right now. Uh, 20 different kinds of tomatoes all sorts of peppers, um, spinach, zucchini, eggplant, strawberries. Um, being that we are in that growing zone, uh, we started planting um, within the last two weeks. Uh, we've had some chilly nights, but other than that, um, our weather here is actually getting to be pretty, um, pretty warm. So I'm excited to see what kind of comes out of our garden. Yeah, what kind of what are you what type of uh, gardening methods are you utilizing? Are you growing in raised beds or are you growing in the ground? Uh, we're we're growing in the ground, but we're also gonna try the raised beds as well. Um, prior to this year, we did everything in pots. Mm -hmm. um, so this will be the first time that we're doing it in the ground, and it, it is organic. Um, so yeah, so we're pretty excited to see what what comes out of it. So you had said that um, previously that the garden area that you're utilizing now, there used to be horses there at one time. It's probably very fertile soil back there is what I was trying to say. Yes, exactly. And that's something that we really didn't think about until um, we have a gentleman who really helps us with our um, with everything, really, our landscaping, our chickens. Um, he's from Guatemala. Mm -hmm. And he actually brought that up to us, being that the horses, um, the previous owner had several horses, and that's where they were kept. So, yeah, the soil is, we have that extra bonus of having um, a very fertile soil. How important is it for you to grow your own food, to have the ability to do that, or to buy local and support your community? Is that important to you? Oh, most definitely. Um, you know, we just the idea of being able to go into the garden and, and pick um, a tomato or a pepper or anything that we can add into our salads, into our meals. You know, we don't know how much we're going to be able to produce, um, but we we definitely support anything local um, before we we buy anything that's coming in from somewhere else. So very important, especially during these times with the whole coronavirus. Yeah. So share about the types of animals that you have and what are their purpose? Um, I'm looking down at two of my dogs right now. <laughs> um, we have two Goldens, uh, one Aussie, and their, their purpose is just to, to give us love and for us to give them love. Um, and then we have a whole bunch of chickens and um, we accidentally have one rooster. <laughs> so we have one, um, but it's kind of cool because now we have uh, several of our eggs in an incubator. So we'll be hatching a few more. My son's excited about that. Um, so yeah, and like I said, we get so many beautiful eggs from our chickens and we don't sell, we don't sell anything here. <laughs> but I love being able to package them up and give them to friends and neighbors. And, and um, like I, once again, with the coronavirus, we actually had a shortage of eggs. So we've been, we've been filling in the, um, the holes for people who need eggs, which that's, is awesome. Yeah, that's a really nice um, opportunity that you have to help your community. Oh you yeah, know, definitely. Do you know what type of breeds of chickens you have? Um, we have uh, several Americanas, um, we have uh, Black Copper Morans, um, Blue Splash Moran, I'm looking over to them right now, um, 
else? Easter Eggers. Um, gosh. Just um, Rhode Island Reds. Uh, so a variety, a variety. Okay. Um, and then, of course, we have our two little goats. So uh, Carrie and Luke, uh, they were born December 1st, and they came into our family shortly after that. They were bottle fed, and they are just the sweetest things ever. Sometimes I think they're, uh, they think that they're dogs. Um, they're just so loving. They're, they're the best. And they're uh, half Nigerian dwarf and half pygmy. Okay. And you're utilizing them for what purposes? Um, well, they're, they too, like the dogs, they're our pets. But um, like I had mentioned before, um, they, we had, we've only done it once now. Um, with the whole coronavirus, we've kind of been put on hold. But we had a fundraiser, and it was called uh, Breathe for a Reason, and all the money went to St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, but it was a goat yoga event. So we had several different classes, and the goats loved it, the people loved it. It was just, just a perfect day, most amazing day, and that was March 14th. So that was right at the cusp of when everything started to just go down from there. So... Yeah, um, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Oh, I wanted okay. to touch base on that. Okay. Um, but let's talk about um, what do you think your biggest successes and challenges have been um, starting this type of lifestyle out in the desert, if you will? Um, well, our, I think our biggest, um, I'll start with the challenges. Um, you know, we did buy an older home. Um, so we could have this acre lot. Um, being in an older home in Vegas, we've had some issues with leaks and busted pipes and stuff like that. Um, so as far as, um, and also being on this kind of piece of land in the desert, you need complete irrigation for every single plant. And when there is a leak, <laughs> you have to figure out where that leak is on this acre, somewhere underground. So that's that's been an issue several times. My, my husband finds himself watching that meter out at the curb several nights and convinced we have another leak if it's dripping just so slightly. Um, so that's been a huge challenge. Um, as far as with the animals, um, you know, the chickens have really been awesome. I, we haven't had any any issues with them. You know, I've, I did my homework before we got them as far as what not to feed them, as far as avocados, onions, all that, potato peels. Um, with the goats, um, I'll be honest, we, we attempted to go the farmer route and castrate our little boy ourselves, and that did not work out too well. So the veterinarian um, had to complete the, the job. So what can I, if I can ask, what happened with that? Um, well, several people who, um, who have farms in other parts of the country, and they mm -hmm. said, you know what, you just get this little tool with a rubber band, put it around the ball. Like, um, I don't know if that's <laughs> allowed to say. Around the testicles, yes. <laughs> the testicles. And um, yeah, and you're good to go. Um, but that wasn't the case. Um, there was... There, um, after a couple of weeks, I noticed some irritation um, to the where I, it just didn't look right for me. So I brought him into the vet. We do have um, a vet that I found on the other side of town who, um, who is our vet now, and he, um, she sees goats. So they just went in, they snipped the rest and sewed it up, and he's been fine ever since. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, we're, we're learning. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that was so that was a challenge for you. Yes. So what, what, yes. What has been the successes? The good things. The successes. That have been? You know, there's just to be able to wake up every morning and look out our window and just feel how completely blessed we are to be able to have such this beautiful life. I I don't know how else to explain it. Um, like I said, we, I've been in Vegas now for over 20 years and 
you just kind of come to terms with your home is going to be close enough to your neighbor where you can open the window and ask to borrow some sugar. That's how close the houses are. So to be able to have this, to be able to walk out every morning, um, you know, my son shares in the chores of cleaning the chicken coop and uh, collecting eggs and watering the garden. And I mean, it's just a true, true blessing to have that opportunity. Um, you know, and like I said, to be able to share it with other people, um, when we got our little goats and so many people came over, visited, you know, just to see the joy in these kids' faces and the mom's face. And, uh, you know, uh, when my little boy Noah, his friends come over, they love to go look for eggs as well. And, you know, that's Noah's everyday life. And he loves to be able to share that too with his friends. And, you know, like I said, eggs, you know, being able to, line up colored eggs in a carton and share that with your neighbor it just it doesn't get better than that so so yeah every day is just a true blessing yeah okay so let's go back to that event that you were talking about so how did you learn about the event and let's start there about uh, where you heard about it learned about it and what you what you did to contribute to that okay um, well, I belong to an uh, absolutely amazing gym here in Henderson. It's called Lifetime Athletic. Um, there's several of them throughout the United States. Uh, and every year they do a fundraiser called Ride for a Reason. Um, and the fundraiser is to raise money for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Um, so every year has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger as far as how much money they uh, raise, how many people participate. So they, each gym has a committee um, for the events. So I decided to join that committee. And, you know, just when we're kind of brainstorming, um, they, they're asking for some more ideas. Uh, so I, I said, how about go yoga? <laughs> um, so from there, that's where... Um, the main the main event is called Ride for a Reason through the gym, and that's where we came up with Breathe for a Reason. So we decided to have it out here at our home, and um, it just kind of grew from there. So this was the first year that it's happened where we incorporated the yoga goat yoga um, to raise money. So it was it was pretty amazing. We had a local restaurant donate food. Um, a friend of mine sponsored um, a wine truck. So instead of a food truck, it was a wine truck. And um, yeah, it was just an absolutely perfect day, perfect event. Um, and yeah, like people were asking, like, when can we do this again? Um, the combination of yoga with animals is there's to me, it's like nothing compares. It looks like it was a very successful event. Yes. And you are a yoga instructor, aren't you? I am. I am. Last spring, um, I was certified um, through um, our gym. I took a yoga teacher training course. So, and then, um, yeah, so I was kind of like trying to figure out what I want to do with that. And then um, it all kind of like just pieced together. So, yeah. So in the future... Um, I want to become certified in uh, trauma yoga and hopefully down the road we can do something um, with people who are suffering from PTSD, whether it be law enforcement or military. That sounds great. So let's switch it up a little bit and I want to talk about what the country, what the world is going through right now with this pandemic, with the coronavirus. Um, what is your thoughts on and the whole situation with this? And how is it impacting your community? Well, my, I mean, it's, it's, it's scary. I mean, we'll just be honest. It's, it's a very scary time in our, in our life, in our world. Um, but I feel like it's also an opportunity to come together from afar. And this is where we need to kind of lean on each other the most, whether it's, like I said, to just send out that message. Like, does anyone need anything? Eggs or toilet paper or, or whatever. Um, you know, and it, 
as far as how we're going to get through this, we're going to get through it together. Um, I do believe that we have to stay healthy in our minds and our bodies in every way possible to either, you know, keep our immune system um, up, um, but also we do need to follow these rules and regulations that they put in place as far as social distancing. Um, and we just need to hope and pray that we do get through this and we get through this and we're stronger from it. Agreed. Agreed. Where do you see yourself in five years on your homestead? Um, well, um, we do want to continue just growing. Um, we have, we were actually right, right before this coronavirus happened, we were looking at moving um, back east. I'm from Connecticut, like I'd mentioned. Um, and we were looking at moving to Pennsylvania so we can kind of uh, expand from this one acre. Um, but right now we're here. So whether we're here or in Pennsylvania or somewhere else, we just want to, whatever we're doing here, we want to be able to share with others. So whatever um, happiness, whatever joy we have here, or whether, like I said, wherever it is that we end up, um, we just want to be able to share that with others and the way I see it, you know, we don't do anything on our farmstead where someone can walk away with something tangible, whether, you know, it's a jar of jam or, or, or whatever. They, they walk away with so much more, what, what I believe to be so much more as far as, you know, the experience just being here with goat yoga. Um, so that's, I mean, that's kind of what we want to do, just grow it from there. Uh, and help people who have been victims of PTSD or, you know, anyone who can really benefit from the combination of the animals and yoga. That's great. That's really nice that you're doing that for your community. So we're getting ready to wrap up. If you can sum up your experience with the homestead thus far and living this lifestyle, what would that, what would that word be? Uh, well, I had said the word earlier, um, just a true blessing. We're just truly blessed to be able to live this life, my husband and I together, um, and with our son and, and share it with others. And that's really what it comes down to. Um, you know, being in law enforcement, we've seen so much. Um, we know what, what exists in the world, what exists in the Las Vegas community. And to be able to have this, this little like hidden pocket, um, it is, it's a true blessing. You got quite the little oasis there. Melissa, thank you so much for taking your time and sharing your story with me. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much. You have a great day now. You too.